A welcome to the Fundamentalist Hour, brought to you every Sunday morning at 2.15 a.m. and presenting some of the most outstanding fundamentalist leaders of America for your spiritual edification. We're very happy to have with us today as a special speaker the famous fundamentalist evangelist Dr. George Irving Barber. Dr. Barber has been uh, preaching, of course, since World War II. He served his country, and uh, as a matter of fact, and it's not just a play on words, he was a barber during uh, World War II. And um, uh, that, of course, also happens to be his name. Now, Dr. G.I. Barber, his friends call him G.I., is probably one of the most outstanding authorities on the biblical doctrine of herology uh, anywhere in America. Uh, Dr. Barber did his doctoral dissertation on herology uh, during his long and very arduous effort at obtaining his master's and his doctoral degrees. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Barber, as a fundamentalist evangelist, has a, has a positive, optimistic attitude. He always looks up. And he's not a downer type personality. He's an upper, and many of his friends refer to him as upper GI. Yes. So we're happy to have Dr. Barber with us today. And I'm going to ask you to step up right now to the microphone. Uh, Dr. Barber, please bring us your message on the biblical doctrine of hair. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here today and to bring this great message. Let me say that down through the centuries... There have been various movements in history and theological areas where different neglected doctrines were brought to the forefront of our thinking. Yes. Back in the 1500s, it was Martin Luther that we discovered the biblical doctrine of justification by faith. Amen. In the 1600s, it was John Calvin that awakened us anew and afresh to the fact of the sovereignty of God. Amen. In the 1700s, it was William Carey that sparked our enthusiasm to reach out into the whole world and preach the gospel of Christ. Amen. In the 1800s, it was the great doctrines of premillennialism that began to be preached that had been neglected for so long and now in the last third of the 20th century the fundamentalists have finally made their contribution to the broad spectrum of theology they have rediscovered the biblical doctrine of hair and made it a test of fellowship praise God now let me point out three things about this message today first of all I want to talk to you about shameful long haired men and second we're going to talk about sinful short haired women and third we're going to talk about sham haired preachers now let's cover this thing. When I preach on this subject, I declare the whole counsel of God, brother. I don't just, just single in on one subject. I try to cover the whole thing. Now, now, let's take this matter of the biblical doctrine of hair. Now, you listen to me. I didn't write this Bible, but I want you to hear here, right here from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. The Bible says, does not even nature itself teach you that a man has long hair? It's a shame unto him. Oh, the shamefulness of long hair. Somebody says, well, there's just one verse in the Bible out of 30,738 verses that mentions this tremendous truth and emphasizes this, but there's only one John 3, 16, friend. After all, how many times God has to say something before right. it's true? Somebody else is going to say, well, what about the cultural mores of that time? What about the culture of the time? Uh, is of ours long and short hair concerned? Does that have anything to do with that then or now? Certainly not. It doesn't have a thing in the world to do with it, beloved. We just have to stand by the position that we fundamentalists have been taking, because, listen, fundamentalists don't make stupid mistakes. I believe we know this is right, because that's what we've been preaching. Amen. I right, right now, I want to give credit to Jerry Rubin. Now, I know that Jerry Rubin lied in a lot of the things that he said in his book on Burn, Burn. And you can't believe anything that he says, but there's one great statement that does stand out. With all the authority of the King James Version, when he said long hair is a symbol of rebellion. We latched on to that, and we never preach a message on long hair, on men, how shameful it is without quoting Jerry Rubin. Thank God for Jerry Rubin. Thank God that back in 1967, he came out with this statement because we might not have noticed it. We might not have realized that it was a symbol of rebellion. We might have thought that Jesus actually had long hair. We might have thought that the Jews were right when they've said that down through the centuries their rabbis always wore long hair and beards. But you see, Jerry Rubin has corrected that and we, bless God, can quote him. Forget all about those Jewish rabbis. Forget all about that tradition of the Jews. Forget about what they did in the first century. You listen to what Jerry Rubin said in our times. Long hair is a symbol of rebellion and let's never forget it. But there's one thing I do want to emphasize. I discovered this in my research for my doctoral dissertation. I discovered that in one sense of the word, it's not so much the length of the hair, but it's the location of the hairs and the direction in which those hairs are pointed. Location and direction. That's the concept you've got to master. Now let me give you some illustrations of this. For instance, a hair growing out of the side of the scalp, as long as that hair above your ears is pointed horizontally, it goes over the ear in a horizontal direction and maybe has a little curly cue at the back and comes down uh, slightly toward the nap of the neck. That's spiritual. 
That's scriptural. Yeah. But that same hair might be four, five, six, seven inches long. If that same hair comes down oh, over no. the ear or touches the collar, yeah. you've ruined your fellowship with God. Amen. You see, it's the location and the direction that is really important. Yes, sir. How do we know this? Because fundamentalist preachers wear their hair long there on the sides, but they got it in the right direction. That's right. It's also spiritual and scriptural if you've got a balding area on your head. To, to grow long hairs most anywhere where you can get one to grow, and you can train that up in most any direction that you can point it if it covers your balding spot. Right. And it can be twisted around on that balding spot, and that hair might be 8, 10, 12 inches long. Right. But as long as it covers the balding spot, and is pointed consequently in the right direction and doesn't come vertically down and touch your collar or, or hit your ears, then it's still spiritual and it's still scriptural. Yes. Bless God, we know that's right because that's the way we fundamentalists do it. Amen. I know many of all any preacher yes. that has just trained his hair around. He's grown hairs that are several inches long, but he's yes. got them in the right direction. Yes. It's the location on the scalp right. and the direction in which those hairs yes. are pointed that's, that's really important. Truth. That's positional truth, brother, and we've got to stand by it. One thing that makes me mad, even in our Christian schools, we have all these pictures of the founding fathers. And there they are with that long hair, Benjamin Franklin hair coming down, touching yeah. his collar, coming down part of his back. There's Thomas Jefferson with all that hair. And even George Washington and those founders. I picked out a, up a $2 bill the other day and looked at it. And there on the back of it were all these long-haired, hoopy-looking men supposed to be signing the Declaration of Independence. Bless God, I heard the other day that a Christian publishing house was going to put out some new pictures of our founding fathers yeah. so that they'd have short hair. Right. It doesn't make any difference about history, my friend. Uh, if it doesn't match our theology, let's rewrite history. Let's get the truth out, regardless of the consequences. Let's stand by these great and noble principles. I want to tell you, my friends, if we're ever going to have a revival in America, we've got to come back to these tremendous truths. We've got to get men to cut their hair. Thank God for great spiritual leaders who will sometimes even give an invitation for folks to come forward, get their hair cut, Amen. and go to the barber. I heard about a pastor's conference not so long ago where that courageous pastor, standing by this tremendous truth, had a bus out there on his parking lot with a barber in it. And he sent a lot of those preachers out there to get their hair cut because he knew that they were their hair was uh, pointed in the wrong direction. Coming down Dutch and that's right, we'll never have revival in America. Or do we get the men into the barber shop, brother? We'll never have it. Second thing I want to stress and I want to emphasize is sinful, short-haired women. Yeah. I get so disgusted at these pusillanimous, pussyfooting, compromising, two-faced, fundamentalist hypocrites. They'll preach on long-haired men, won't preach on short-haired women. Yeah. I want to tell you something, brother. I didn't write the Bible, but there's four times more verses in the Bible about women supposed to have long hair and not supposed to braid it, not supposed to plait it. The Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul are clear on that. Listen to me, sister. In 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 15, the Bible says, If a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. And listen, if she won't have long hair, she'll just shave her head, is what verse 6 says. If a woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. If it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. I tell you, these wives, if they're, not, if they're just going to braid their hair and plait it and have little old four or five inch hair sticking up on top of their heads, they ought to shave their heads. That's right. And if that's a shame, they'll have long hair. And, brother, I mean long. long. It ought to come down. Brother, it ought to touch your shoulders. Yes. It ought to come down the back. Yes. Men, it's a disgrace for them to wear their hair like that. That's the way women are supposed to wear it. Yes. I travel up and down America holding these great crusades. Yes. And I want to tell you, I hardly ever see a pastor's wife that has long hair like the Bible describes. Yes. It's a disgrace. I grieve over it. I was over yonder in Greece looking at those statues. And, and those statues of first century women, they all had long hair. Yes. The hair came clear down, you know, halfway down their backs. And that's the way that God intended for their hair to be to be worn, and women won't do it. I'll tell you why these pusillanimous, pussy-footing, compromised, and hypocritical fundamentalist preachers won't preach on it. They're scared. They're scared of their own wives. They're scared of their deacons' wives. They're scared of their female Sunday school teachers. They're scared if they preach on this, the women in the choir will walk out and not sing anymore. I'll tell you, my friends, it's a disgrace. We've got to get back to these fundamental truths. We've got to get back preaching against braided hair, preaching against plaited hair. We've got to put the emphasis where it ought to be. If we don't do it, we're ruined as a country. I want to tell you one thing. We've got to get back to the external. You've got to get back to the externals, brother. Somebody says, well, God looks on the heart, man looks on the outward appearance, but don't you forget, brothers and sisters, man looks on the outward appearance. Yes. You better get your outward appearance uh, together. You better get your act together, brother. You better shape up. Yes. You men, listen, you better get your hair cut because man looks on the outward appearance. Yes. Well, you women better grow your hair long, those man looks on the outward appearance. Let's get back to these externals that are really vital as far as we fundamentalists are concerned. Now, let me say this. Some sweet little old long-haired hippie, you've got to give him credit. 
Some of these little old hippie girls, they've shown us anew and afresh that long hair can be beautiful. Bless their little hearts, a sweet little old hippie girl out here on the freeway hitchhiking, selling flowers. That little old hippie girl with the hair coming down to her waist, as far as her hairstyle is concerned, is far more pleasing to the good Lord than some, some gussied up preacher's wife that spent three hours at beauty parlor on Saturday afternoon comes prancing down the aisle on Sunday morning trying to be a spiritual Christian. Oh, what a disgrace. We're never going to have a revival in America until we get the men into the barbershops. We're never going to have a revival in America until we get the women out of the beauty parlors. they got to be closed up. Those women in our churches and reputations need to find another job so they'll stop contributing to this terrible sin of women cutting their hair and plaiting it and braiding it. There's got to be a change, my friend. But the last thing that I want to say, and this, this really grieves me, I want to tell you it grieves the depths of my heart. I want to talk to you about sham-haired preachers. Whoa. Now listen to me, brother. Listen to me. I didn't write this Bible. But here's what the Word of God says right here in First Corinthians 11, the great norm chapter on hair. Every man praying or prophesying, up there praying before his church, up there preaching and prophesying and setting forth the Word of God, every man that, that, that does that, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. You know what some fundamental Baptist preachers have done? It grieves me. They've sent down to Mexico, or they've sent off to Indonesia, and some woman has had long hair, and it's her glory, and it's beautiful, and she sins. She has that hair cut. And they send that, that long hair. And they send that cut hair to some hairstylist or some barber or some beautician. And that beautician takes a hairnet. And he weaves those hairs onto that hairnet. And he makes a hairpiece. Yes. And they're Baptist preachers, fundamentalist preachers that are pasting a wad of woman's hair on their balding heads and covering their heads and getting up in the pulpit and praying and preaching and prophesying. And the Bible says it's dishonorable. Right. It's just as dishonorable as men having long hair is shameful. It's just as dishonorable as women having uh, short hair is sinful. There's got to be a revival in America. The preachers have got to get right. I hate to get personal. I hate to point to individuals who've fallen into this sin. Oh, the vanity of a proud preacher that thinks that it's going to improve his image if he could cover up his bald head. Why doesn't he look back to a great man like Elisha? Remember Elisha? They said, go up thou bald head. Go up thou bald head. And they, they were criticizing him for his bald head. You don't think it bothered him? No, sir. Some bars came out of there. And they ate those, uh, those critics, those kids that were criticizing him because of his bald head. Listen, brother, you just go ahead with your bald head. Bless your dear heart. Don't cover it up. Don't do something dishonorable. If anybody criticizes you, God will send some bars out there. And those bars are going to eat up all those critics. So don't you worry about it. But I'll tell you, it grieves me. I think of evangelists that have done this sin. I think of Jack Garner, the evangelist, the fundamentalist evangelist. I used to know him when he had very little hair. He went right out there to Costa Mesa, California, and he had a hairstylist make him a hairpiece. And every morning when he gets up, he has to repaste that hairpiece on his balding pate. I'll tell you, my friends, there's something strange about preachers that want to paste a lot of woman's hair on their head. There's something mighty strange. I can mention others. There was our own compatriot, a great fundamentalist otherwise. I think of Roy Thompson. Roy Thompson's bald head. Roy Thompson doesn't have real hair, just a little fringe around the side of his head. There's Roy Thompson who's taken a great stand for fundamentalism, but he's sold out to the flesh and faced it. What a woman's hair on his head. Oh, what a disgrace. And then I want to mention one more, and I hate to get personal. But you know, the, the, the Apostle Paul got personal. He talked about Alexander the Coppersmith. He talked about Demas that had forsaken him. So I'm just following in his path to mention these names, and maybe these fellows will repent if they could hear this. This last one grieves me the most. I've known this man for 35 years. He didn't have much hair when he was 25 years old. Now he's got a big wad of gray hair on top of his head. I'm speaking, my friends, of Bob Jones, Chancellor of Bob Jones University. Bob Jones is sold out. When Bob Jones compromises, there's no hope left for the rest of America. There's just no hope at all. No hope. No hope. No hope. We're never going to have a revival in America until we get the men into the barbershops. We'll never have a revival in America until we get the women out of the beauty parlors. We'll never have a revival in America until we can have a great meeting of preachers and get together and preach all these great subjects. And these fellows that have sold out to vanity into the flesh and tasted this wad of woman's hair or fake hair on their heads, we've got to give an invitation. Amen. Get those fellows to come forward and lay their hair pieces on the altar yeah. for Jesus. Amen.
Thank you very much to Dr. Barber for this great message on horology. Those of you out there in Radio Land who are listening to us this morning at uh, about 2.30 now, a.m. on Sunday, if, you, if you've been touched by this message, if some of you fellows out there, some of you men, your, your hair is down there over your ears, why don't you get a comb right now and comb it in the right direction? Go in there and look in the mirror. Go in there and do it right now. Don't, don't wait any longer. And if, it's, and if it's really, if it's coming down there and you can't comb it in the right direction, it's too long for that. It's way, way too long. Listen, you get, you get to the barbershop first thing tomorrow morning. Get down there and get your hair cut. Get down there and get your hair cut. You women, listen. I know you can't grow hair overnight, but you cancel them beauty appointments. You decide in your heart you're going to grow your hair down to your waist like it ought to be. Let it be long and not braided or plaited, just straight. You might have to iron it, but you just keep it straight. Don't braid it and plait it, because that's what the Bible says uh, is not the way to do it. And listen, you preachers, if some of you preachers have been touched in your heart, because you know, you know that you've got this long hair, and it's not your hair. You know that you've got this pasted hair. Pull that hair piece off right now. You do it. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you. Remember our mailing address, which is Box 10, Westbury, West Virginia. And you send your donations today. Send us $10 to keep this great fundamentalist hour on the air. Now, if you will send your contribution today, we have this special offer that we want to make. If you will send that $10, we have especially prepared for you a lock of hair. Now, this lock of hair, we'll send to you if this has been a blessing to you. And you put this lock of hair on your lapel or on your dress. And you wear that lock of hair as a testimony to the fact that you believe in this great biblical doctrine. You want to keep it before the people. And if you also write in this week, we'll send you a free one-year subscription to our new publication edited by Dr. G.I. Barber, Scissors of the Lord. Now, don't miss these special offers, folks. Uh, help keep us off the air with this great message so that we can declare the whole counsel of God. Goodbye now. Until next time.